My name's Steve Cook, um, sometimes known as Stephen, but more often Steve or, or some bloke in a hat. Uh, and um, I'm uh, the owner of and strategist at a company called V, which I started. Um, it's V Purposeful Strategy. And my focus is on enabling organizations of all creeds and colors all over the world to define something that I think is hugely important and as a centerpiece to all strategic consideration. Uh, and it's that that I really want to talk about this afternoon. I'm doing other talks um, over bio, and I just want to uh, remain fairly focused on this one particular subject this afternoon. So the, the title of my talk is What's Your Why? Who Cares? And Why Does It Matter Now? So I guess the really big first question is, what do we mean by why? And the word that I'm going to use, which everybody uses, and it's been used quite a lot today, is uh, purpose. And it's amazing to me that after 35 years of spending my entire career, one way or another, focused on purpose for clients, organisations and others, um, that it's now starting to become better understood. So I really wanted to use this afternoon to talk about what I consider purpose to be and where I consider that purpose is going to go. So I think to start with, I'm just going to give you a, a short history of purpose. Um, purpose started out as, as being an innate desire to solve a problem. You can go back to the mid-19th century, for examples of this, notably the cooperative movements. But if you think about uh, John Deere in America, John Deere designed a plow uh, blade because he wanted to make farmers' lives easier. And for the next 150 years and, and counting, uh, John Deere has made its entire purpose and focus to be around safeguarding farmers and agriculture workers, notably in America, but, but also internationally. And there's a whole separate talk talk on what John Deere has done over the last 150 years to, to build its purpose. Purpose then started to sort of grow up in the early 1980s, I think. I mean, it was around before that, but in the early 1980s and became a central component part of brand strategy. I'm a brand strategist, but I stopped using the word brand many, many years ago because it became hugely misunderstood. It became misunderstood because brand strategy and purpose within that really started to become the province of marketing. And once purpose became the province of marketing, it started to get ruined. And it became a statement. And then it became a spin. And then it became about gaining differentiation and competitive advantage, winning business one way or another, which is which is fine of itself. But it's not really what purpose was originally about. And frankly, it's not what purpose should be about now. Um, purpose rapidly became a strap line. Everybody can think of thousands of great strap lines um, and they are a manifestation of purpose, but they're not the purpose in, in, in itself. And that's something we can we can move into. Um, but as customers started to become more demanding in our rapidly increasingly transparent world some years ago and the, the arrival of the Internet, customers and others started to become far more critical of brands and they started to realise that there needed to be some substance behind the business, notably in things to do with environmental policy. And I was working with a company called SCA back in the early 90s, who became the world's greenest company. And they shifted their entire purpose to an environmental policy, which has stood the test of time and is rigorous across all of their brands. But as customers started to become more critical of what was becoming an increasingly facile representation of purpose and brand within organisations, businesses and organisations started to search for ever more dramatic and so say meaningful views of purpose. And what we arrived at a few years ago were some brands, some businesses, making enormous grand claims about how they were going to save seals and the planet and everything else, um, which were not rooted either in the reality of what they were offering out to the marketplaces, their, their markets, but nor were they representative of how their business wanted to operate at origin. And so I always go back to the beginning. I think many people here, uh, with possible exception of Dominic, are running businesses that are um, small businesses. And somewhere along the way, people made a choice to start a business or to start an organisation. In most cases, the reasons for doing that are, in fact, rooted in purpose. We're going to go on a mission. We spotted a gap in the market that we think we can fix. We have spotted a fail somewhere that we think we can fix. Um, and so 
purpose starts out, so origin, I think, being manifest in an organization, but organizations have started to lose that over time as they become more sophisticated, unless they remain absolutely fixed and true to it. But in the last few years, this subject that I love and spent my life engaged in one way or another has started to gain a new resonance. When people started to get fed up with the grand claims, when customers started to want more from the businesses that they bought from rather than just products and services, purpose started to come back into the frame of reference again. And it's now probably one of the most central and debated business strategic or organizational strategic subjects that is being debated today. What our purpose should be, and more importantly, what the purpose of businesses and organizations should be within society, within communities, and so on. Now, I'm not going to talk about purpose as a strategic or philosophical consideration this afternoon. Others will do that. I think Professor Colin Mayer is talking tomorrow morning and he'll do a great talk on all of this. But I just want to sort of debunk some of the myths of, of purpose and go back to some fairly basic first principles, which, which I think we all need. In my view, purpose is why we exist. It is the central driving thoughts that we have possibly at the origins of business but certainly as business develops it is what we are here to do it's a zealous mission sometimes I, I call it that and increasingly that revolves around the role that we want to play and it's our choice it's not led by customers sometimes it's led by shareholders but it certainly isn't led by customers it should be what we want to be and what we want to and how we want to manifest ourselves and it should be about how we want to contribute to solving problems. Now, often businesses will talk about purpose as solving a customer problem. They'll meet a customer need, and that's fantastic. But increasingly, we're talking about purpose from the perspective of the higher role that a business or an organization should play uh, within its own um, confines, within its staff base, within its customer base, but also in broader communities and broader society. And I always think of brand and purpose within that as what will people think of us? What are they saying about us? I often talk about the credit and deficits of purpose and the way that people think about us. We can build enormous credits by doing good things over many, many years for customers and so on. And if we have fail, if we have built credits, then people will more likely forgive us. We have that within our families. I have that with my wife. I'm constantly in deficit there. But um, we start to build uh, credit with our, with our um, audiences one way or another. But I think that purpose primarily is a central function of business strategic thinking. It is our credo for living. And it actually informs when it's properly defined, and this is the work that I do, define purpose so that it can then be used as a way marker and a central uh, driver for all other business strategic decisions. And I include money within that. So any kind of uh, view about the type of business that we want to be, the type of people that we want to engage with, and that's employees and suppliers, partners. It could involve things like mergers and acquisitions work, which I do a lot of. Um, who do we want to engage with? And who do we want to engage with us? Let's be discerning about that and let's make choices about that. It is about the conduct, as I call it, conduct or culture, as other people call it, the values that we have and how we manifest those values through our conduct and how we operate. That's informed by purpose, too. The approaches to leadership that we adopt, what type of organisation do we want to have and how does, do we as leaders ensure that we do that? There was a wonderful piece of film yesterday from, I think, Michigan of a sheriff who was trying to manage a, uh, an increasingly um, vitriolic crowd to do with the, the most recent issues in, in the States. And he just took all of his protective gear and his gun and everything else off and said, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to march with you. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to walk to? And he diffused what could have become a really violent situation. That type of leadership flew in the face of almost every other police chief, as far as I can see, in the last few days in, in the United States. So purpose really drives things like the systems, the really hard end stuff, the systems, the processes that we adopt, our mechanisms for purchasing, supply chain management, a lot. Everything is 
in reality or should be driven by purpose. So we start to look at how we can evolve purpose to make sure that it is meaningful with inside an organization. And that flies in the face of the recent history of purpose up until two or three years ago. And what's happened is that three different, as far as I see, three different types of purpose have been prevalent over the last 20 or 30 years, certainly in, in, in my career. The most common one is a purpose that has become a sort of statement that is about a description of what we do and potentially the benefit that we can deliver to our customers. That sort of purpose statement is, is fine, and it's something that allows a business to gain differentiation from its competitors, to gain competitive market um, advantage over those, over those competitors, and to resonate with buyers. And I spend a lot of time working in B, really hard-end B2B environments in, in technology and so on. And so those descriptive um, brand positionings rooted in true purposeful thinking are, are fine, but they're the ones that are most at risk of just becoming marketing messaging one way or another. The flip side of that, the complete polar extreme, are the purpose definitions that are claiming massive changes in the world. And Starbucks was, I think, the most notorious one of those over the last few years. Huge overclaims that move away from anything realistic that their organization might be able to deliver out into the world and live by as a, as, as a credo. And then we have another sort of purpose that's been around for, for some time, which will be the cause-based purpose. So jumping on whatever bandwagon that's related to a very specific cause. And I think it is that type of purpose that over the last few years has started to move purpose more to the centre of business strategic thinking to be taken much more seriously again, because that sort of purpose has resonated with people. But those three purposes, and there are many others, and we, if we had time, we could talk about them. Um, but those are all purpose definitions that are designed to talk out to people for people to receive. And I want to posit today the idea that there is, in fact, a fourth type of purpose, which is, I think, going to be the future. And I'm going to talk more about this tomorrow. But the fourth type of purpose would be one that is participatory. I'm not alone in thinking this, but I'm certainly uh, I've been making it my, my centerpiece. The idea that we are not, as a business or an organisation, an island. We are an interconnected part of and an interdependent part of communities. And those communities could be other businesses. They So look at B4 and the B4 network bio that we're on now. That is a, a community of businesses. It could be a community based on businesses and suppliers and supply chains and so on. But it could also be a business centred in real community, real society, made up of People who've hitherto been known as employees or customers or voters or donors, potentially leaders, um, suppliers, other businesses, shareholders even. But I think we might have reached a point now, and I'm putting this out there, that we have arrived in a situation where every single one of those types of descriptor for different types of people that a, a business might want to engage with, we can boil that right down to they are all, we are all human beings and we are all citizens. And so my view would be that a business, and particularly now because of COVID, a business that uh, wants to grow, wants to contribute more, wants to find real purpose that is sustainable and that transcends anything to do with competitive markets and, and is actually something that can become what, what purpose used to be, which is a true credo for living, really should start to consider purpose from a way in which it can bring people together. It can actually create communities as, as a business where everybody shares views and ideas and opinions. Some years ago, Lego decided that it wanted to co-create products with its customers. And it started to do that really effectively. Other businesses have taken that on board. But what if we were able to use businesses and social enterprises as centerpieces for creating real change that the businesses can benefit from and that everybody out in their ecosystems in their world can benefit from too? And if you follow that sort of logic, that there is a, 
a type of purpose which should be central to a business, but should also be central to a business's ecosystem, everybody that, it, that is within its orbit one way or another, then I think we can start to take purpose away from being something that is philosophically, esoterically sort of in the margins of thinking and turn it into something that really becomes vibrant and dynamic not just marketing message at all, but really the way that we live, the way that we want to conduct ourselves in, in the future. That type of purpose takes a number of things to make it really come into its own, and I think it has to for, for the future. It requires, in the first instance, the will to do it. Will enough businesses and organisations save themselves, and particularly now when a lot of people are thinking and talking about change, will, do we have the will to become the type of business that genuinely can be a force for good, but that also brings people into our orbit as well as projecting ourselves out to them. Perhaps we should ensure that we can be that type of business in the future, but we need to have the will to do it. In order to do that, we also need to recognise that we should let go of some of our egos and some of our ownership in terms of the way that we run our businesses. Maybe there is a step change coming, and I, th I think it is, in the type of leader that businesses have. Um, there's a lot of talk and debate around the vulnerable leader. The one that says, I, I don't know, Dominic Hare, you did a brilliant job this morning on, on making it very clear that you didn't get it right at the beginning of this. And that's fantastic. Really great to hear that. And I, that s suggests vulnerability, which is a human trait, which is something that everybody can really gravitate to. But if we start to lose our egos and our desire for ownership and the control mechanisms that businesses have had in the main in the past, the sort of binary hierarchical systems, and we discover that it's actually better to work together and to do that properly. I don't mean that in a kind of hippie way. I mean to properly work together with other organisations to share problems, to get rid of the need to have competitive advantage over those other businesses, because there's plenty of opportunity out there for everybody. And then you can start to build the thing that is really critical in all of this, which is groundswell. It's all very well for one or two businesses or social enterprises to sit there in the margins and to do really great stuff. But in order to create change in the way that I think we need to make change now, every business needs to have a type of purpose that is real. And as David Richard, I think, has just pointed out, authentic and highly credible and will work for large numbers of people, but where they feel they can come to it, not in a transactional way, but in a real way that actually helps to contribute. And I think that starts to become a really important way for the future. Um, lots of work was going on around all of this before COVID. It was all in the margins, in the main. It was very philosophical stuff, as I said earlier. But maybe uh, COVID has been an accelerant. It's been petrol on the fire of things that were starting to change anyway in terms of how businesses thought about themselves. And I would posit the idea that participatory purpose as a new-ish way of thinking about purpose, which always should have been central to businesses and organisations, perhaps should become the central and defining why that will matter to people in the future.